So my presentation today is about uh, large-scale spatial data science with Exagerstat. So Exagerstat is basically a, a team effort here at Chaos to develop a software that can do spatial statistics, geostatistics at Exascale, so can work on your um, laptop, desktop, but also on clusters and uh, supercomputers. So this is work in collaboration with uh, Sameh Abdullah, Huang Huang, Insan, Hatem Taif, and David Keyes. Okay, so, so in, in fact, the, the, the talk, uh, I mean, has a, a lot of slides, and I kept them all together because the, the talk is available from my website if you want to read more later on. And what I will do, I will uh, give you an overview of some of the ideas that we, we're trying to develop here. So it has three parts. The first part uh, gives some framework about um, spatial statistics, the, the kind of problem we're interested in. The second part talks about uh, high performance computing. And the third one talks about an R version of Exagerstat. So the, the type of problem that we're interested in um, is, is the setting where you have observation at a number of locations. So here you have 28 stations where you measure uh, wind speed, hourly wind speed. In fact, the, this over Saudi Arabia, the different uh, rows correspond to different time points. And um, the, the color uh, are coded here. So you see that darker blue indicates a uh, larger wind speed. And the goal basically is to predict the wind speed at a new location where you don't have observation. And so you, you may want to have a predicted mean like in this column here, but also maybe quantiles 5% and 95%. Uh, the, the type of problem that will be interested here is not just with 28 station, but in setting where you have thousands or maybe hundreds of thousands of, of locations. Um, and so you have very big data set. In fact, this this particular data set is, is analyzed in, the, in this paper here if you want to read more about that. The, the framework is um, a simple one. We're going to look at Gaussian random field, mean zero, and with a matern covariance function that is uh, written uh, down here. So the covariance between variable at two different locations, SISJ, has this form. Uh, K is a Bessel function. And there are four parameters, uh, sig sigma square, the uh, uh, partial seal, beta, the range, um, new controlling the smoothness and tau square, the, the nugget effect. So, so what happens here is that um, uh, basically if, if, if tau is zero, so there's no, uh, no, no, no noise, no nugget effect, then sigma square is di directly the, the variance. Um, and we're interested in estimating these four parameters from, from data. So that's the basic framework. Now, it's, it's uh, useful to define uh, what is called an effective range, which basically tells you at which distance the correlation function reaches a small value that we can define, for example, to be 5%. And so if you have spatial data on a, on a unit square, you could say that the the dependence is weak, medium, or strong if this effective range is 0 0.1, 0 0.3, or 0.7. Um, so this is to give you some idea about this matern covariance function. Oh, sorry, here. Uh, here I have plotted some of this uh, matern covariance function for different value of the parameter nu. Um, so nu equals 0 0.5 is the exponential, nu equal one is the whittle, 1.5 is here, and uh, when nu goes to infinity, it's called Gaussian or square exponential correlation. And you see every time there are three curves, green for weak, blue for medium, and red for strong dependence, and all share the same property that this line, this horizontal line is at this 5%. They cut for the green at 0 0.1, for the blue at 0 0.3, and for the red at 0 0.7. What is different really is the behavior for small distances. So horizontally H is the distance in space. You see the behavior here is quite different from the behavior here. And this means that um, the, the properties in particular, the smoothness properties of the field are different. So here you have a realization of Gaussian field with that matern model. Um, the first row is that exponential. And the last row, so you increase the, the smoothness parameter nu. The, the last one is for this Gaussian when nu is infinity. 
And you see when you move from left to right, then the realization are, becomes smoother and smoother. So this is much smoother than with the exponential here. When uh, you move from a row to, to the other, so this is weak dependence, medium and strong dependence. So you can see, for example, here you see, you see best that um, the, if you're in a red region, then you, you stay red for, for quite some time in space, a bit less with medium dependence and much less with a weak dependence. So basically what we want to do is from data that come as realization from such field, we want to estimate the, the parameters. We're going to do this uh, with likelihood methods. So we can write the Gaussian likelihood. Uh, it's a multivariate normal distribution. Z is the vector of observation of the variable of interest at N location. N is the number of location. The matrix sigma here therefore is going to be of dimension N by N. And when N becomes large, of course it becomes very, very big. And because this, uh, this log likelihood has the log determinant and this quadratic form in the inverse of sigma, uh, we'll need uh, Cholesky factorization of sigma and this will require of order n cube floating points um, operation and n square memory. And then we maximize the likelihood to get the, the ML. So why are we interested in, in maximum likelihood estimator? This is just a, a toy example to show uh, what happens with alternative classical method. For example, here you have an exponential variogram. So this is the equivalent of an exponential covariance function. The, the true parameter theta here describing the range is 0 0.25. If I plot this function uh, here, this is the green curve in the middle. I'm not sure if you can see this very well. It's the, the same for all three panels. And then we simulate realization from a Gaussian random field at 400 location in the unit square. We estimate this parameter theta either by uh, ordinary or weighted least squares, but also by maximum likelihood. We do this a thousand times. So we have a thousand estimates of this parameter theta for each of the three methods. And um, therefore a thousand curve for each method. And we summarize the distribution of these curves with uh, the box plot for function or functional box plot. And you can see visually that if you use weighted least square, then you can reduce a bit. The, so this box in magenta is a bit reduced by weighted least square so that you reduce the variability. But of course, if you use the likelihood, then it's much better in terms of, of variability. This is a toy example. There are many more examples that we have explored in, in this paper here. So this is just to say why we're interested in, in the likelihood here. And eventually we want to do prediction. So if you you assume that everything is Gaussian. Z is what you have observed is of dimension N and Z at a new location is zero is what you want to predict. Uh, you have the dependent structure here in this multivariate normal. And basically you look at the conditional distribution of Z at the new location gi uh, given the observation vector Z. And you can use, for example, the conditional mean as your Krieging predictor, but also there you have um, a linear solve so you will need a, a Cholesky factorization of, of sigma. So when the data set becomes large, when n is large, then this is very computationally intensive. And this is why we bring in high performance computing uh, to deal with this setting. And this is why we develop this software, Exageostat, exactly for this problem. Of course, there's a large literature on how to approximate, uh, for example, the, the likelihood to reduce this computational burden. Uh, but we, we interest in this as well, but we interest also in the exact version of the likelihood when N is very large. And in fact, with this software exagerostat, we can deal with the exact likelihood for very large um, N, very large number of location. And we organize a competition on spatial statistics for large data set uh, during this year. You can read more um, about it on our website and also on this uh, recently published paper that um, comes with discussion from the from various selected participants. But basically we're able to, to simulate very large data set exactly, so no approximation. And those are now uh, publicly available as benchmark to test your favorite method of dealing with large data sets. And we're able to evaluate the likelihood exactly for this large data set. So we can find the exact likelihood, the exact MLE without any approximation. And therefore, 
if you come with uh, approximation method, you can compare on this benchmark data set your approach with the, the exact MLE and, and see how far you are and so, and so on. So, so this opens up the possibility to really compare systematically and maybe more fairly on a, on a number of benchmark data set approximation method that have been proposed in the literature. Okay, so, um, so, so this is basically um, just a, a brief overview to, to tell you a little bit the framework that we're, we're considering. Now, that, now what I will do is to um, give you some idea about high performance computing or HPC uh, that, that um, the software exagers stat is, is based on. So, um, so to do that, I'm going to just keep here a few slides that you can read from the, the slide later, later on. Um, just if you wonder what is HPC, what is high performance computing, basically you're using parallel processing um, on, on advanced application program. And um, what is interesting is that you can use uh, different type of uh, processors, or you can have accelerators such as uh, GPUs. Uh, but, but really what we want to have is, is a software that is able to, to work on different platforms. So maybe you don't have a supercomputer, but you want the, the software to, to run also on, on your desktop. And the software is built in such a way that you can say how many, for example, CPUs you have and how many GPUs on your particular uh, computer. And it's going to automatically take this into account to find the best way of using this uh, computing power. Usually HPC is used on a, a system that, uh, that are above a teraflop. So teraflops is of order 10 to the power 12 uh, floating operation per second. So in this list here, uh, HPC start, starts here. What we're talking about now is uh, exascale or exaflop. So this is 10 to the power 18 operation per second. So, so if you think about, about it, it's 1 billion billion, both with B operation per, per second. Such a, such a computer that can run at that uh, speed doesn't exist yet. It's expected, the first one is expected to come sometime next year, uh, probably in, in the US. Um, and those type of uh, uh, computer require special software and algorithms to be able to run at those speed. So what we're doing here is we're working with the extreme uh, research computing center at KAUST uh, that is developing some of these, these algorithm and, and we, we're using this so that the software we build will be able to run on this type of supercomputers. So what are the existing supercomputer in the world? Well, the most powerful in the world is currently the Fugaku in Japan. It's ranked number one, uh, has around 537 uh, petaflops uh, peak performance. And you see more than 7.6 million cores. And of course, it's not a cheap toy. It costs about 1 billion. So here you have a picture of the supercomputer and you can think about it um, as if you put 20 million smartphones in a room and that's your computing power. Or if you have 300,000 servers in your room, this is what you have at your di disposal to, to play with. Of course, there are many other supercomputers. Um, so, so there's a, a rank a website, top 500. The, the latest is from June of this year. So the second um, in that list is uh, Summit at ORNL. And this one has about 2.5 million calls and you see it still costs about 200 million. And here I listed a couple uh, from, from Europe. I listed also one in Spain, uh, Mare Nostrum is ranked 63rd, but you see that in Saudi Arabia at Kaos actually we have one as well that now is ranked uh, number 77. Of course, when it was uh, bought, it was in the top 10 or so. But those toys uh, fade out very quickly, so now it's it's down in, in those ranks. But we, we're expecting to have a Shaheen 3 to come sometime next next year, probably, and, and put us back in the in the top 10, maybe. I mean, I, I'm not sure exactly. Anyway, so these are some of the, the supercomputer in, in the in the world that that are, are available. Now I'll skip here a few things here. I just mentioned 
uh, here that if you deal in, for example, with um, uh, the case where n equals 1 million, so you have a 1 million by 1 million matrix in double precision, this will require about 8 terabyte of, of memory space. And um, if you want to evaluate the, the likelihood n to the cube, then you already at 10 to the power 18, you're already at exact scale, basically. Of course, you can do approximation and traditional approaches is to have a global kind of low rank structure or do co covariant tapering, but there are better approaches such as hierarchical low rank. So hierarchically in the matrix, you do some low rank approximation and you can also reduce the precision in, in some part of the matrix so that um, you, you, you save memory and speed possibly if you have the right algorithm. So I'll skip some, some of this, but just in a nutshell here, what, what is exagerostat? So it's combining the latest state of the art linear algebra technique that will be able to run on this supercomputer. Um, and it's optimized in many ways. Currently what is supported, we have this uh, Gaussian framework, univariate, but also multivariate. And we have some space-time version as well. We have some non-Gaussianity through this 2K GNH random fields. And uh, we, we are about to, uh, to have also some non-stationary kernel covariance function that we can uh, use, use as well. Um, so it has three main components. So one is, is about uh, simulation. So you can simulate uh, realization from large, um, large dimensional uh, realization of random field. So that's the, the data set generator part. There's an MLE part uh, where you can um, do Gaussian MLE, but also some, some non-Gaussian, as I mentioned before. And you can do exact computation, but there is also some, uh, some approximation with uh, mixed precision accuracy and tile low rank uh, approximation. And then there's the, the prediction basically that does Krieging at new, at new spatial locations. Okay, so there I'll skip also some of this. I think I will just um, go to this slide here to tell you a little bit about how this uh, covariance matrix is represented in Exagerstat. So this is the lower part of the covariance matrix plus the diagonal since the matrix is, uh, is symmetric. Um, you, can, you can divide it into what is called tiles that are stored in double precision. So this is kind of to do exact computation. There's a so-called diagonal supertile approximation where this part here, these tiles are set to zero. So this is some kind of tapering. The tile low rank keeps the diagonal uh, like, like here also in double precision. So this, this blue is for double precision, but this lower part is approximated by a low rank, um, low rank approximation of those tiles. And then you can play this game with the type of precision. So, so in this case here, you have the blue in double precision, but this grayish in single precision stored. Or you can even use uh, a third type of precision, half precision, to, to further uh, reduce the, the, the memory footprint of the, the representation. So I'll skip some of this detail here as well, but I wanted to tell you about the, the development timeline. I mean, this is not something that we started last week. We started in fact in 2017, the first version was released um, and it was doing some basically basic univariate uh, Gaussian um, uh, likelihood. In 2018, we, we br brought this uh, Tyler rank approximation and using different libraries that have been developed in, at KAUST. In 2019, we um, implemented this mixed precision uh, support of, of Exagerstat. 2020 was the COVID year, but we didn't uh, stop because of that. So we, we brought some um, multivariate version, this three precision as well. And uh, the, the runtime system, we use one from, the, uh, from another team in, in the US. This year we've brought up uh, space-time modeling, some non-Gaussian as well. We can do optimization in, in parallel. And so there's some method for that now and some other type of approximations such as H matrices. And we plan to continue uh, with this over, over the years. Okay, so let me, yeah, here I have included a list of, uh, of publication if you're interested in the slide later on. Basically they're not in uh, 
essentially not in, in, in statistics journal, except for, for one that is in, in special stat here. The other one are on this IEEE mostly um, paper on, on file and distributed uh, system. So if you want to read more on, on this topic, the references uh, are there. So, so the last part in the remaining time, if I have, let me see. No problem. No problem with the time. Uh, another five, four or five minutes or so. Uh, so the last part is about exagger stat R. So basically, I mean, most people don't like very much uh, to run things on supercomputers with um, basically C, C coding and, and so on. And so we wanted to have a version that people could, could use with, with R. So that part is, is about that. Um, essentially, it's not too difficult. What we use is an R wrapper that takes exager stat and make it, makes it accessible um, for, for users in R. So if you go to the GitHub that is listed here, this one is the one for the um, C version. And if you add an R here at the end, there's another GitHub for the R version. So you can download either the R or the C version, depending on your, your wish. And uh, Exagerstat uses uh, an optimization method that we've tested on many cases, and that seems to work pretty well in many settings, uh, this NLOPT. And then it has also some, um, some dependencies that, that comes from Chaos, this chameleon for, for exact computation and this HICMA for uh, H matrices. Uh, and there's the, the runtime system uh, that, that is star P, P U. So that's basically a bit of the, the structure uh, of this exaggerated stat. Um, yeah. There are a lot of example uh, with code in R. So if you're interested to try yourself, the code is there. So you can try on some data set and, and see, see if you like it. Um, what I wanted to show you here is, for example, some comparison because, um, I mean, you know, to do spatial stat, I mean, there are other packages. And in fact, we're developing some uh, method to automatically benchmark other packages in spatial statistics. So here, the comparison is only with two that are quite popular, GOR and fields. So you can see in the first, uh, the first figure reports the execution time per uh, iteration, so evaluation of the, the log, Gaussian log likelihood as a function of number of location. Um, GOR in blue and fields top around 20,000, uh, maybe a little bit uh, more. Um, and, and you see even in this region is much slower than the implementation that we ha have of exaggerstat R. And in fact, if you compare, you look at ratios, you can see that exaggerstat R compared to fields is about 30 times faster compared to GOR is about 100 times faster. So this is on the, the sizes up to about 20,000 where all methods work um, together. There is another one if you run on um, if you run on a supercomputer. So that was run on the supercomputer here at Chaos on Shahin two. Again, the plot is the execution time per iteration per evaluation of the likelihood is a function of the number of location. Those are in, in thousand. So and depending on the number of nodes that that are used, um, you see. The, the red here is for four nodes and goes up to 256 nodes, the purple. You can see the type of improvement. This goes up to 250,000 um, dimensions. So this is the, the dimension and the number of uh, location. So there's some more code for, uh, for that that I'll let you read if you want. So just to, to wrap up, basically this software exager stat and there's the, the R version that, that you can download from these uh, GitHub sites. Uh, basically the, the goal is to do large scale spatial statistics or, or geostatistics. Uh, I think what, what I like is that you can run it on your laptop, but also on clusters and your desktop cluster, GPUs, supercomputer, if you have access and so on. So you can run it on many, um, many different systems and you don't have to worry about changing system and what to adapt and so on It's going to take care of it because of the the way it's, it has been implemented it has three main feature one for simulation of um, basically random fields another is about estimation 
many of the Matern model, but as I mentioned, we have some multivariate and space-time model as well, and and some non-stationary covariance as well in the in the making. And then you can use it to do prediction. So you can do creeping. Uh, you may not have data set that are uh, of size one million or, or more, or you may want to use it on on smaller but still fairly large data set. And you can see the speed up compared to other uh, available uh, package in R is still quite significant. So this means that you can do many, many experiments with this, uh, uh, this software on a large scale. So again, the slides are on my website if you want to look at them uh, in, in more details. And thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. So uh, are there any questions here in the room for Mark? So I, I wonder, Mark, uh, I didn't have a look to the approximation methods. Uh, it seems that there is a paper in Chavez. Uh, so uh, the best approximation method is, is close to the exact solution or, or is very far away from it? Yes. Yes, it, it comes pretty close. Yes, some people with some good skills and uh, uh, yeah, yes, so, so some are quite close, but some can be very far. So, I mean, you, you know, a, a lot of this approximation method evolve uh, around tuning the method. There's always some tuning parameter, like if you use a method that like composite likelihood type of method where you use a, a certain number of neighbors, then it's going to depend a lot of this number of neighbors, right? So, so people, when they write the, the papers, I mean, they, they do some experiment and they kind of find out good number of neighbors and it kind of works and so on. But when you give them the data set like that, basically, uh, I mean, they, they don't know how it was generated. They don't know in principle, too many things, so they have really to to use. I mean, to tune the best way they can, and it's not always easy. And if you tune well, you can do well. But if you tune not so well, you can do quite badly. So. Um, so you definitely think it's worth uh, investing in such a big uh, project, right? This uh, giving a nice gold standard to compare the, the rest of the methods and so on. Yeah, so, so, so that was, yeah. yeah, that was the idea, basically to be able to kind of more fairly assess this yeah. method for large data set on uh, a number of benchmark data set that we had control over and people had to, to play with. And, and I think in many publications, people have, they propose something, they compare with one or two methods and okay, the method works maybe best or sometimes and so on, but it's not very systematic. Whereas here we really tried, for example, just the, the simple framework of a Gaussian random field, Matern covariance, but then you can play with different uh, type of dependence or so weak, medium or strong. And, um, different type of smoothness and so on. So I think in the end, we, and with or without nugget effect, we had like 16 data sets. And you can see that some method work well in some setting, but not in others and so on. So that, that was really to kind of look more closely at, at this uh, proposed method of approximation. I see. So it seems that uh, Stefano wants to ask you a question. Yeah. Go ahead, Stefano. So I have a I have a quick question. So basically, if I understand correctly, basically, so you right now you have you have this package working from um, matern models and you're coming up with non-stationary versions. But I mean, would that be possible? I guess one of the main limitations that I can see is that ideally you would like to write your own covariance function or you know yes. come up with with a function that provides a covariance matrix. Yes, or, or, right. or, or a precision yes. metrics, yes. and then from there you do the inference. Yes. So how far are you from this goal? Yeah, so we have some, uh, I mean, this means a lot of a lot of coding. So things were coded in C originally, and apparently is not very user-friendly for this kind of question. So, so there was a, I mean, we had a summer intern from computer science that re-implemented in C++, C++ 
some version exactly where the the user can uh, can input his or her own covariance model and um I mean, it's, it has not yet been released, but I mean, this is one of the many things that we we plan to to include indeed to make it more flexible. And it, as you said, I mean, some limitation is that it's kind of the basic cornerstone of of many things, but we're trying to build more things around this yeah. th these uh, these tools. And and of course, I mean, eventually, you can build many more things around that. You can also bring perhaps some other model from machine learning and so on that will be combined and all that but as you can expect this is not done just in a few weeks I mean, yeah, this yeah. is a multi-year effort to to build this debug and and try and, and so on so yeah, yeah.